Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Uh, I got this great stamp set, local King Rubber Stamps at the stamp show last weekend, and I couldn't wait to use it. I thought it would be wonderful for a man's birthday or Father's Day or any time where you need to make a card for a guy or a seafaring lady in your life. I don't want to judge. Um, but I thought it was a really fun set and I couldn't wait to use it. And of course, it's got a great bottle in it that could be used for other things as well. So here is the main stamp, and I'm going to use a very light blue marker, water based marker, to ink it up. And this is the Tumbled Glass Distress Marker. And someone had mentioned, I had mentioned that sometimes my markers are gooey and sometimes they are dry, dry, dry. And a woman that watched my video said, you know, Lindsay, I don't think you're pushing your caps on all the way because you saw one that, um, that wasn't capped off right. And I think that might have been my problem. So she might have saved the day. So thank you, kind lady who saved my day. I think that that um, was probably the situation there. I'm just going to give it a little bit of this darker. I don't want too much of that because I want it to be pretty light. And then I'm going to color in the cork here with my medium brown color. I'm just using a few colors. I'm not going to go crazy with it because um, I want this to have kind of like a very masculine vintage feel to it. Uh, I'm going to go in with some dark brown here just towards the bottom and then I'm going to just tap a little bit on, not too much, just on the cork in the, the bottom pretty much. I love that local king technique. And then I've got a, um, this is some of that Recollections cardstock I picked up at Michael's. It's really thick and sturdy. I like it quite a bit. I'm going to stamp right on there. <sighs> I'm going to give it a breath of my hot air first. And I find with this stamp it's easier to cut the label first and then stamp on it. And this is one of my $10 sets of dies. That was kind of a bargain. I think it's, it reminds me of, you know, kind of like a fishing plaque or something. It's kind of got a little bit more masculine feel, even though it's a little fancy. So I kind of like that. All right, so there, see what a beautiful impression you get? And now I chose, um, there's three boats in the set and I chose this one, it's kind of the medium size one. And in case you're wondering, I, um, I did buy this. It's not a freebie, it was, you know, I know sometimes you wonder, when you see somebody that's <laughs> that's enthusiastically demoing if they've you know paid for the materials or if it's you know part of a design team, no, I just I'm a fan of their um, not that that matters. I mean I wouldn't be on a design team if I didn't love the product anyway. But uh, just wanted to disclaim that in case you were wondering. I'm just gonna go with all the colors that I used before. Just go give a little bit of the brown. I am directing my color a little bit more than than random. And then I will just kind of all over, just kind of give some of that dark brown. I want to make sure it stands up in the um, in the little in the bottle. Yeah, there we go. Words. All right. So I like to give my ink a couple seconds to transfer. I always seem to get a better impression that way. And there we go. We got our ship in the bottle. Now that was a lot easier than the regular ship in a bottle, huh? All right. So now I'm going to heat set it. And the reason I'm doing this is because um, these are these are water-based markers. I'll be able to go over with my um, alcohol markers and not run it, but I do want to make sure it's dry before I attempt it. And I also heat it from the back because sometimes it curves and that just kind of um, makes it curve back where it belongs. So a little tip for you there. All right, so now I have this very light frost blue Copic. It's B-O-O, -O, boo, the boo marker. Ooh, that should be a Halloween color, don't you think? I think so. They should have made that like a spooky color. Boo! <laughs> Somebody said, oh, so funny. Um, they were watching one of my Ask a Crafter videos, and every once in a while, I forget to turn, well, okay, every time, I forget to set my stopwatch, so I have no idea what time it is, so I'll be like peeking at the, uh, <laughs> at the little screen on my camera, and, um, and which is, you know, extreme close-up of my face, how appealing, and uh, this lady says, every time you do that, I think you're going to yell boo. <laughs> I should do that one, then that'd be really funny. Well, it might give somebody a heart attack, maybe I won't do that, that's probably a very bad idea. All right, so now I've got, uh, I just want to have some streaky blue to make it look like a real bottle. And I want to add some inking around the edges, but I don't want anything, uh, this is me turning around, you probably can't even hear me. I don't want anything too harsh, so I'm going to use color dusters. So again, I'm turning around, trying to find the appropriate color. Here we go, this one's pretty close. And I'm going to use some brown distress ink. This is Vintage Photo. Any dye-based ink will work well with these. Actually, you can use pigment ink too, but I wouldn't mix and match them. I keep, you know, separate ones for your dyes and separate ones for your pigments. And I'm just gonna just kind of go around the edges. I have much better luck with these than, um, than the foam tools when I want a smooth blend. But, yes, you know, use the foam tools if you prefer. That's completely up to you. If you're clawed like me, you might find that the distress, the uh, derf, the color dusters work better. And if you want to uh, kind of control where you go, you can kind of pinch it. 
and then I can kind of wiggle a little color in underneath my little bottle so it looks like it's got a little, uh, whatchamacallit, it's got a little shadow on there. Of course, if I ruled the world, I'd have a mask made in with a stamp set in every stamp set. Wouldn't that be nice? Like the new Stampendous ones I had that had the little background in there. All right, so now we've got that inked up. I'm going to set that aside. And now I've got this. Um, I just embossed this panel of tan cardstock, craft cardstock. And again, I'm just going to use the dusters just to accentuate the embossing. And uh, you could use like some, I think in the UK, your dollar stores have these little shaving brushes that are very comparable, that are probably a better deal for you. Um, I found that joyans.com has them on sale quite frequently. And also um, I got some on sale at the online company, Sky Blue Pink for a good price. Um, they were like, pack of four was like 350, but that was a sale price. I don't know how often they run a sale like that. All right, now what I wanna do is I wanna put something like a rope for a border and I'm gonna use my crocodile. And this is, you probably know this already cause you don't live under a rock, but there's like a little depth gauge here and you can tell it how far up you want to put your hole. And I, I don't want it too deep in the paper. So I'm setting this at about Oh, quarter of an inch or so, I think. And it's about, uh, I don't know, two little tickies on the thing. I don't know. <laughs> Metric, I barely know inches. Yeah, we're gonna, that's not deep enough. Once I, once I look at it, but if I set that, then I know I'll get the one on the other side of the paper the right depth too. And I'm gonna do one over here. And I am gonna put eyelets in, just to be fancy fancy. And I'm gonna use sewing eyelets, which are a little bit bigger then your regular scrapbooking eyelets. And I want to use a couple cream ones. These are actually two part eyelets because they're meant for like sewing, but you really only need to use one part, especially if only one side's going to be seen. Pop those right in there and I will squish them shut. Uh, I think these were Dritz eyelets. Sometimes like if I see them on clearance, I'll grab them. They're kind of expensive if you buy them in the sewing department, but uh, I'll grab them on clearance, especially in funky colors. And then I want to use this. I'm not sure if this will fit through the hole. So let's try it. This is some new um, jute cord I got from Paper Mart and it's really beautiful. So I'm hoping it fits because I really wanted a thick ropey border. I'm thinking maybe with my crochet hook, I can force it through there. I'm hoping, wishing and hoping. Uh, okay, you might hear elephants. My kids and my husband are upstairs husband was in the woodworking side of the basement a few minutes ago, but this is actually the Father's Day card, so I didn't want to spill the beans. I didn't want to be doing this while he was, what you're making over there? There you go. Look, ah, it's just a little bit too big. I can't seem to get through that through the hole. I really want to use that though. Let me see. I'm not going to give up because quitters never win and winners never quit. That sucker's going through the hole. I'll tell you what. And uh, oh, there's this new feature on YouTube where you can edit stuff out of the middle of a video, which I'm finding, lo I almost did it on an earlier video, but then I started talking about how silly my mistake was in it. And I um, edited out the mistake and then it really didn't make sense. So I left the mistake in. So I don't know, what do you think? Mistakes in, mistakes out, what should I do? Maybe maybe it would be cool if, they could, if you could take your, your uh, edits and then just like magically put them into a blooper reel. <laughs> you know, boy, I didn't have to fill a blooper reel every week probably. All right, so there we have that. I'm just gonna secure that on the back with a little hot to glue. Oh, you wanna see my fancy new hot glue stand? It was actually a uh, a wine bottle rusty thing that um, went terribly wrong apparently. My husband made it, stuck it in a scrap wood thing, so I reclaimed it. I had to have him pry the, uh, my old, uh, the plastic hot glue stand off my other piece of wood, cause I didn't put that, I wasn't thinking too clearly when I put that on the way I did. So, ha, now it's better. All right, there we go. Just gonna make sure it looks all right from the front. And I'm using that Recollections cardstock for a base. It's really thick and sturdy. I'm kind of digging that. And you know what? I'm gonna move this wax paper because the wax paper is all inky. That's why I had it there. So I wouldn't get my table all inky and then the back of my card all inky. I had, that was left over. I had to spray. I sprayed some sealer on that before. So I did get a couple of uses out of it. And since this is kind of bumpy and lumpy, I am going to use hot glue to stick it to my card base. And I know a lot of you guys poo-poo the hot glue. You think I'm, you know, out of my gourd for using it on so much stuff, but 
it's flexible when it's dry it goes through the mail it doesn't add weight you can get a little dimension from it without it adding too much bulk it's wonderful stuff guys and don't burn your hands off because i haven't had that particular warning in a long time so you know same thing same thing goes don't burn your hands off if any of any of you old subbies will know all about don't burn, not burning your hands off <laughs> all right so now we're going to put our little panel there and um, if you had stamped the wood grain, I would say go ahead and use dimensional adhesive. But um, since I use, I feel like I want a little anchor charm there. I don't think I have any though. Um, but since this is kind of lumpy, I am going to use the hot glue again. This is so, look at that. It's so thick. I don't know if you can even tell, but it's really quite fantastic. And there you go. So if you're, I don't know, trolling the YouTube mere hours before Father's Day and you need an idea, I got you covered. I want to thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and click that subscribe button. I do appreciate it. And share it on Facebook and tweet it and Pinterest it and tell your friends and all that jazz. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.